Hello and welcome Anonymous and today we have a very special album uh, for me to review because I don't know if I have really confirmed this in any video but I'm not a big fan of R.E.M. Um, before this album I used to hate them, I'm not gonna say oh this album changed my life or something but I have to say you know I don't appreciate them but I don't think I hate R.E.M. anymore because I did really used to hate R.E.M. for their generic tunes, their lead singer is he's not the worst musician but he goes out of tune a lot, out of tone I fucking despise that there are some, t there are some moments on this album whenever that happens uh, this is the 8th studio album by the band, this is basically their middle of the road album not, not per se middle of the road mediocre album because this is considered their greatest achievement uh, I believe this is requested by Stephen Young or Amy K since Amy K has the, uh, the like critical acclaim, the indie artist taste um, but the thing is Stephen Young because he, want, he just wanted me to see me in pain, fuck you um, it's, it's actually labeled as alternative rock and broke pop, which is, I didn't really think, or how do you say that, baroque pop, broke, I don't know how you fucking say that, I think it's broke pop, you know, it's broke, broken pop music, whatever, well that's not what it is, but you get my point. Uh, the album cover is like a spiked cube with the band's name on it, so that's probably their iconic logo or something. It just looks like an incomplete spike ball to me, but it's not even a ball. I just noticed it's it's a fucking Rubik's cube. So the album already doesn't make sense. I don't hate it. It just looks pretty bad to me. Automatic for the people. It sounds okay to me. The title is okay, but I don't. You know, I don't know. It sounds a bit vague, but it's not a terrible title, I suppose. So I'm kind of meh on the album cover. And spoiler alert, that's essentially how I am on the record. I, want, I wanted to really hate this album because I kind of hate R.E.M. But I don't really hate them, I just despise their music, I think. I don't hate the guys on R.E.M., I have nothing against them. But, you know, they, they are acclaimed musicians, so I'm happy for that, I'm happy for them. But I was never a big fan of this band. Uh, we have 12 songs on this record, um, yeah, let's start off. We have, we have actually a drive side and a ride side, so I think the first side is about driving songs that get the album going and the second side you can relax a bit more, a bit, you know, be on the right side, be, not literally, not literally but be, you know, uh, somebody else is taking over the, the wheel or something. I guess, I have no fucking clue what that means, so there we go. Uh, we have Drive, which is, uh, I, I actually have a description for every song, which I also did on another record, but let's not mention the terrible band. Uh, you know, at least I... Like I'm really conflicted right now. I don't want, you know, I want to call REM a terrible band, but you know there are way worse bands out there. From all the bands that I despise, they're probably like my least despised band since there's still some musicality there. There are still some diversity there. I just hate their vocalist, you know, his voice, not per se him. You know, same thing with Bruce Springs. I don't hate the guy. I respect him, but I fucking hate his vocals. I hate his songwriting style. Which people are probably surprised about too. There are more Bruce Springs noms coming up because people like to see me in pain, I suppose. Or they want me to give him a chance, but I just don't. You know, I, g I, gave, I gave Born to Run a 7 or something. I think that record is good, but you know, I'm just not a big fan. I just don't like his voice. Although I do think that his voice in the 70s was still bearable. It's just terrible on Born in the USA, which is requested by the way, so don't ask. Uh, but going back to R.E.M., uh, the first song I actually called TikTok Boy because you have that tick. So, you know, that's endless drab, it just goes on forever, I just do not like that. Um, yeah, that, that was okay. I do like the instrumentals though, I do like the, the kind of uh, the driving, you know, no, no pun intended, the driving nature of this track. It does sound nice, it does start the album off pretty good. Although it does go downhill after this, but it's still, you know, it's still a relatively good song, I would say. Then we have Try Not To Breathe, which has just, uh, just bad instrumentals, just bad vocals. You, you know, this is like the first song that I noticed that the lead singer really goes out of tune, out of tone with his, uh, with his vocals. Like, he makes it, you know, he's just, 
Like he's going to puberty or something. Like his voice, his tone is changing all the time. I fucking hate that. This is the first song where that happens, I believe. And it's especially present on the side when they sleep tonight, which the band, I, I think it's like one of their least favorite songs. And it's definitely one of my least favorites too. I read, I don't watch interviews or something, but um, uh, the, or the side winder, I believe I said winter, but whatever. The side winder sleeps to not, or I actually wrote about a second song, Try Not To Cringe, which is, yeah, you know, that vocal, Try Not To Cringe, mate. Uh, this track is essentially the same, it, it's just a bit longer, it's just a bit more worn out, that title is terrible, Tonight with ITE, which I criticized the strokes about too, but at least it was a great song, so it had that going for it, where, where this song just goes on forever. Uh, the production is pretty shit, it's, all, all of the songs, most of them are really loud, they're really the raw and loud in the mix, while well, this record is very mellow, so that doesn't mix at all too. And then we have probably like my least favorite song of the record and arguably of the band ever. Everybody's ears are bleeding. <laughs> That's my description. Everybody hurts. Uh, everybody hurts indeed listening to this god shit, to this god shit, to this dog shit album. Well, dog shit song. There are some gems on this, on this record which I will go into a bit. Uh, the the production is okay, I suppose it's not as loud as on the previous songs. Um, the riffs are annoying the shit out of me. Like they're kind of seducing me with the with this intro riff, but then those atrocious vocals come in and everybody grabs. You know those vocals are just terrible. Like I cringe every time. Like everybody's ears are bleeding off of all of those vocals. I fucking hate that. Um, I just think the song is slow as fuck, it doesn't do anything for me, like, uh, you know, what Mojo had is on their list of, you know, songs that make you cry. This song doesn't make me want to cry, but it's, you know, like, what, what does the song do to me? It's, it, like, it, like, makes me go to the radio to fucking smash it in with a hammer. That, that is what, that is what I'm getting from the song, fucking hell. And then we have New Orleans Instrumental number one, which is a two minute pointless instrumental. And I actually wrote it spoken word instrumental since, well, it's not a spoken word, but it's basically like the beginning bit. You have one of the band members saying, oh, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? We're, we're going to play this. Uh, yeah. You know, they're just saying that like, uh, like getting ready and shit. But that already ruins the instrumental since you have some speaking on it. I know. Yeah, I'm fucking... Like, I'm, I'm nitpicking right now, like, who fucking cares about it, Dominus? But it's an instrumental, no fucking vocals, shut the fuck up, R.E.M. Like, and the instrumental itself, you know, if you take that out of the order, I'm, I'm, all, I'm okay with that, you know. It's just like a nitpick thing. But even the instrumental is just kind of boring, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's drab. It's lifeless, I think. The, the instrument doesn't go anywhere. It just sounds really boring to me. So it's just a bad instrumental, I think. And it's not even credited as an instrumental. The track just says it's an instrumental number one. And there's not even a second instrumental, I believe. So, like, what is the point of having number one in there? Like, are they meaning it's the best instrumental? Or maybe they have a, like a follow up record with more instrumentals on it? Like, I was so intrigued by this instrumental, I want to buy another REM record. Yeah, fuck you guys, fuck you. If that is your point. And even then, fuck you for this boring ass song, so there we go. And then we have Sweetness Follows, which is probably the track that reminds me the most of, uh, of Molly Crew. And people are probably looking at me like, how can you compare that dog shit hair metal band to this great, amazing, artsy, alt rock band? And I honestly despise both of them. You know, I, there are some songs by R.E.M. that I like, there are some songs by Monty Crew that I like, but overall I think the bands are pretty bad. Um, yeah, and this track right here, you know, I was, call, I was called again, I forgot it already, Sweetness Follows. And actually I named this track Sticky Sweet Follows, if you know what I mean, because Monty Crew had a song that was called Sticky Sweets or something on, on their debut. I forgot the name already, like who fucking cares, A Too Fast For Love. Pretty generic album, like this one, it's a bit better, so yeah, if you can figure it out for yourself, you can figure out the rating for yourself, but that was, that was kind of repetitive. Deja Vu Bitch, you know, 
listening to an REM record, listening to me, there's no much of a difference right there. Um, yeah, this record is just cheesy as fuck. Uh, the band is basically saying that uh, you know, if you bite through the to the bitter apple, to the yeah, to the sour apple, things are gonna get better. Sweetness follows. Uh, I just don't like the lyrics. I think the vocals are pretty bad on this track. They're not as bad as on Everybody Hurts and Try Not to Breathe and the Cyclone Sleeps Now, but they're still pretty bad. And we have M Monty Got a Raw Deal, which actually named Monty Wants His Grill Back. <laughs> um, it just sounds very Western in a way. It sounds really generic. It sounds bad in my ears. Um, yeah, this all or this track overall just speaks dull to me. It sounds like a spaghetti monster western or something. It just sounds ridiculous and stupid. And you know, I don't have Monty in that title to remind me of a way better thing, but whatever. Then we have Starmy Kitten, which you know, excuse my language, language right there, but I called it Starfish Kitchen. Kit fucking all Starfish Kitten. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use this phrase right here because most people will understand what I mean with that then. But I'm gonna say this track is uh, bad, cheesy, ridiculous, dumb, pointless. But I'm gonna say I'm gonna point at something and I'm gonna say this track is and then look at where my finger's pointing and you will get what I think of this track. And you know, uh, combine that with the with the thing that I labeled it, and you will definitely get it. Um, and then we have "Man on the Moon," which I named the diamond in the rough because the instrumentals are nice. They're kind of country, western, broke pop, I suppose. Uh, I like the melody on this track. Um, yeah, there's not actually one thing that I despise about this song. It's probably the only just solid track on there, I think. So this track is good, um, I like it. It's a bit too slow for my taste, but I mean it's R.E.M. Come on now, they're, they're just so fucking slow. Um, but still, you know, compared to their other dog shit material, I think this song is actually pretty good. And you know, if I hear it on the radio, I don't want to smash my fucking brains. Just, although I do probably want to change though, because I'm just so fucking done with R.E.M. So such an overplayed, overrated band, but whatever. Um, and then we have Night Swimming. And probably instrumentally, if this was an instrumental, if this would have been instrumental number two, this would easily would have been my favorite REM song because the instrumentals on this track are great. I love the instrumentals. Uh, this is great, you know. There's I believe some violin in there. There's some cello. There's some like some some guitar in there, some electric guitar. You know, it's a very nicely composed song. So I. If I listen to this track, I can see people digging R.E.M. because they are an acclaimed band. They are liked by the majority of people. They are a critical darling, so. But I just do not like R.E.M. I just think their vocals are atrocious and their lyrical content is just fucking dog shit, honestly. Uh, because even on Man on the Moon, you know, I did, you know, I didn't really talk about the lyrical content, but I believe there was a lyric in there: "Let's play Twister, let's play Risk," like. Why men? Why mention those games? Like it's not it's not bad. I don't mind those games, but why have it in your lyrical content? Like there's a man on the moon. Why do you want to play fucking twist on the moon, you dipshit? But you know their lyrics don't make any sense to me. But whatever. I mean, I, I most of the time don't really mess with lyric. But if they don't make any sense to me, I'm gonna point them out. Like the fuck is this? Like. It, it has to go with the song, and I think that lyric right there didn't really fit. And Night Swimming overall is a really nice track. This probably would have been one of my favorite songs if it wasn't for those god atrocious vocals. Because I think that the lead singer on there is our, uh, Michael Stipe, I believe. Uh, I believe that is his name, you know, the bald fucker. Michael Stipe. Yeah, Michael Stipe's vocals on this track are fucking horrible. Um, like he goes out of tune so like I hate his vocals on this track. Like he sings so much out of tune. The the band members actually try to lift the song up to actually make a decent track right here. And Michael Stubb just fucks it up. He just rolls into the studio and he just doesn't give a shit and he just fucking sings the take in one try and the band's saying, Well he actually kinda sound like a like a, like dog shit honestly. Do you want to 
you know, we record it. Oh no, you know, it's a typical REM thing, you know, to keep that in there. That's, that's, that's a typical REM vocal, keep it in there. And I, I just think, yeah, you know, um, oh, I actually named, titled this song Can't Hold a Note to Save His Life. Nice instrumental though, that is actually what I wrote it, you know, but between brackets of the instrumental. So, if this would have been an instrumental, this would have been my favorite REM song, but it isn't, so fuck this track. And I do like the title too, Nice Swim, that's, that's just a nice like, kind of ring to it. You know, everything that has to do with the dark and it sounds nice, I like, you know, I'm kind of a dark person in a way. So it's probably, it's probably my favorite uh, title song on the record and it's my favorite instrumental song on the record. If only those vocals didn't exist, then this would have been a fucking amazing song, but whatever, like whatever, like wasted potential, missed potential, like yeah, fucking hell man, it's just such a waste of a track. Like the instruments were there, but Michael Stipe had to fuck it up, like fuck, fuck me, fuck him. Um, and then we have Find the River, which is probably my favorite song of the record because Drive is a bit, you know, it's a bit tacky. I do like it, but it's, it's a bit meh. Man on the Moon is a good track, so Find the River is probably my favorite because it has kind of the instruments of Nice Swimming. I think it's a bit less special, but actually Michael Stipe listened to me and thought, although I wasn't born back then or whatever, metaphorically speaking, you know, he, he listened to me and I was like, yeah, maybe I should actually make an effort to sing, you know, and he actually did listen to me and he does sing a hell of a lot better on this ending track. The instruments are a bit less special, but I do like them and it does build up uh, eventually, you know, into something great, you know, the pianos eventually kick in and or, you know, they come more to life, I suppose, and they do make a great closing track. Uh, so this closing track is pretty good, it's probably my favorite of the record, so the record does start out good and it does end good and there is a track here and there that I like but overall this record is pretty bad. It's not terrible but it's below average I think, you know, I would say that a 6 is like, uh, is like average and like everything under that is below and everything under a 4 is terrible or just really bad, like, you know. And I don't think this track is or this album is terrible. Uh, Drive is a good track, I, I think. I only think that the lyric department and Michael Stipe's delivery on the track is a little bit on the techy side. That's really the only problem that I have with Drive. Try not to breathe. Is, try not to breathe is cringy. The side when the sleeps now is overbloated. Everybody hurts. Speaking of overbloated, this is a terrible song. Just throwaway garbage. Overrated as fuck, New Orleans instrumental, Point is instrumental, Sweetness Fathers is cheesy as fuck, Monty got a raw deal is uh, generic, Ignore Land, I actually, yeah, I actually um, ignored, <laughs> I actually ignored the majority of the song, or I actually skipped over the song, I believe, but I was basically saying that the instrumentals on the song are nice, or I was thinking that, um, and I actually thought that, you know, what's the thing? I actually imagine the band just going to that ignore land, to that ignore island or something from their REM money. Because this record is like almost double diamond, so they have a shitload of money. They're, they're packed. They're loaded. Um, you know, but I was saying that, uh, oh, if, if they see this, if they see this video, which they're, they're not gonna do. They're um, they're gonna go to their ignore land and they're gonna ignore my review or something. I was actually thinking about it. So my premise is pretty much better than the song itself. Um, yeah, the vo you know it's, it's kind of like nice. But I mean, instrumentals are nice. It's a bit weaker on the instrumental and the vocals are less bad, but they're still pretty bad. So that is my opinion on the ignore land. <laughs> ignore me land. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm funny. Uh, yeah, so that's my rating or my review of the record. Man on the Moon is a good song, like I would say. Night Swimming is Miss Potential. And the last track is pretty good. So, or pretty good, it's solid. It's solid for all it is. So, this record isn't terrible, but it's not great too. So, I'm gonna give it a pretty like middle of the road rating. rating. I'm gonna give it a 5.1. Uh, I was thinking about giving this record a 6 because the ending is quite nice but those fucking vocals are nice swimming and the Starmie Kit and the Monty got a raw deal just fucking blow me out man. They just like, 
get me out of the fucking REM experience. Like fucking hell, man, the songs are so bad. I do, I do like the ending bits. I do like, uh, well, that's kind, of, that's kind of about it. I do kind of like the right side and the beginning of the drive side. So there we go. Uh, so that's my review of Automatic for the People by REM. I don't really like REM. I don't really hate them anymore because they do have, they are a talented band, they are diverse, but I just do not give a shit about this band, honestly. And it just bore me to tears. Uh, so thank you for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you want me to do in the next video. Uh, I'll review what mode of it. On top 10, um, something that you want to see, Rolling Stone vid, whatever, you know, something in that regard. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. You know, and if you are an REM fan, I respect you, you know, if you can, like, not bash me or something, or type in caps like REM does, you know, their fucking name. If you can behave like a fucking proper dude to me, then I, you know, I want to discuss some REM with you. If you, if you love the band, I love the band, honestly, but, you know, if you love the band and you can defend them and you can be a little bitch about them, then, you know, come at me in the comments, I suppose, you know, defend your band, I, I suppose. Hey, that rhymes. There we go. Yeah, fans, bands. Yeah. Man, I'm a better musician than that. they are. Well, I'm joking, but uh, I mean, yeah, fucking hell. Yeah, so let me know what you think about REM. If you have a favorite song, do you have a favorite all? Oh, it's probably this one, and you know, there's more ratings. So I'm probably gonna get some dislikes since REM is uh, like a critical darling, but I don't give a shit, honestly. It's just my opinion, it's my review. If you don't like it, fucking shut it. Or let me know why you love the bands, you know? You can defend them. If you can be a proper dude about them, otherwise I will fucking hide you on this channel or, you know, do the following. But we will see that eventually, you know, there we go. The tent is, the tent, the band is talented. I just don't like them. They're not my cup of tea, so there we go. Uh, have a nice day. Do all those things you just said. Like and subscribe to the channel if you did like them. I didn't say it already, but there, there you go. Yeah, uh, let me know your opinion on REM and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Every monster. Fucking atrocity.